Let every and let everybody find something special to put in their hearts. Let everybody be able to download that special message, that special guidance, that special instruction. Beyond celebration. And I want to commit each and everybody that has come to serve this morning in the worship team, in the media team, the teacher of the day, and for every single person that has come here to represent a family. That they will be well, they will have a moment of their time, and they will celebrate the Most High. In Jesus' mighty name, I commit this service. You're all welcome for service, and I will invite the worship team. Our beautiful worship team. Worship team, come and take charge. All of you are welcome. Enjoy Christmas at House of Revival. God bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Are we all happy to be in the house of the Lord on such a day? Are we happy? Are we all happy to be in the house of the Lord? Yes. We bless the Lord for today. We are going to praise him and give him praise for the son is given. Hallelujah. We wish you a Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to everybody. Hallelujah. Amen. So before we go any further, I would like us to read uh, Isaiah. Isaiah 9 from chapters, from verse 6. Sorry. You can get hold of your Bible. Isaiah If you're there, say amen. Davis, say amen. <laughs> so we are going to read together this, uh, this context. And let us start. For unto us, I can't hear you. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase, yeah, let's go of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Upon the, I can't hear you. Hallelujah. Amen. The son that is given to us, he is a mighty counselor, a peace, a prince of peace. Amen. Amen. So let us be joyous in the house of the Lord this morning for a son he has been given unto us. Hallelujah. Shout unto Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's go. Yeah. Somebody clap for the Lord. 
glory. Your name is mighty. The best counselor. We all know this scripture, John 3, 16, and I would like us to utter it out together. May it sink down to the deepest of your vessels, of your heart. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that so whoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. God gave unto us his own, what he had, that you may live. That you may live. That your children may live. That your work may go on. That you may have an everlasting life. Jesus, thank you God for your son and that's why we worship that's why we worship you this morning and that's why we worship come and raise your voices and give him thanks for his son Father we worship you may you receive our worship as a living sacrifice as a living sacrifice Yes, the world Will bow down and say you are God Every man Will bow down and say you are king Let's go again Yes, the world We'll bow down and say you are God Every man Will bow down and say you are king So let's start
you showed unto us by giving us your only son your only son Emmanuel 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 Be not dismayed
so much for this day. We thank you for the gift of life and salvation. We do not take them for granted. Lord, we have been given a chance to come closer to the end of 2022 and many have not come this close. So we thank you, Lord. We thank you that you sent your son, Jesus Christ, who was born of a virgin birth, who lived a sinless life, 
and who died for our sins that we may have life. He took on poverty that we may have riches. He took on our sicknesses that we may be healed. And the chastisement of our peace was upon him. Father, we thank you. We glorify you. We thank you for today. We thank you for all that have made it. We pray for those that are traveling. We pray for those that have traveled. We pray, Lord God, that they will be safe. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, worship team. Come on, wish somebody a Merry Christmas. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Dr. Sally and Auntie Kate, you're very welcome. It's been a while. I know that at the opportune time you will say hello to us. They should prepare a good microphone there. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. So you're the guys who didn't go to the village. <laughs> Who are going? Praise the Lord. I thought that today there will be no one. Because <laughs> everyone was like, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. I just thought that probably we'll be here with the worship team. But I'm happy that we are we're actually almost full. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, congratulations. <laughs> Praise the Lord. It's a happy, happy day. We are coming to the end of 2022, and it's been quite a year. Uh, I'll say we are coming to the end of a season. We actually have come to the end of a season, and we're beginning another season. This season has been about three years, three tough years. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I think this is the first... I don't remember if last year there was a Christmas service. I don't remember the other year. It was COVID time. So it's been a tough, tough season. Hallelujah. But we want to celebrate together today. Uh, those who are theologians would, would know that Jesus wasn't exactly born on 25th December. It's, uh, he was born somewhere in March, April there. And it, this is winter in that area, and uh, we know the shepherds were out and all that. Hallelujah. So it's not the tradition uh, thing, get uh, Christmas trees and pin. Uh, that's, that's not the case. Uh, but uh, today is just a reminder uh, about our salvation, really. The story of our salvation is what I want to remind us about and uh, when 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 Jesus came, he came to do something very very specific. Uh, among other things, key among them was restoration. It was restoration. So when man falls in Genesis chapter three, what we lose is our kingdom, dominion. God created us rulers. Dominators. That's, that's, that's the reason he created us. Genesis 1, 26. He said, let us make man in our own image and our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, over the cattle, uh, over every creeping thing and over all the earth. And so God created man in his own image, in the image of God he created him. Male and female he created them and he blessed us and said, be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, subdue it, have dominion. That is who we are. That is what God thinks of us. Born again, not born again, Muslim, Christian, Hindu, as long as you have the image of God, that is how you were created. Of course, we know that Adam and Eve sinned, and we fell, and we lost a kingdom. 
and the lion which was listening to our commands threatened to eat us. So we ran and we made tranquilizers. And that gun, you shoot it. And so situations started to come. And there are very key situations that Christ highlights in Isaiah 61. If you may turn with me to Isaiah 61. Isaiah 61 is very interesting because when Jesus come, it comes, it is what he quotes in Luke chapter 4. You can start from verse 14 reading downwards after the temptation and then he declares his mandate. Is, he, he says, this is, these very words are fulfilled in your midst when he comes from the wilderness. So he is declaring his mandate. And here he says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because before then, the Holy Spirit had not descended on him, even though he had the spirit. But after his baptism, we know what happened. You know the story. And then he was led by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness. Uh, and 40 days he was tempted. And then after that, we, had, we have that classic temptation uh, of Jesus Christ. And after that, is when we get that. Okay? Now, in Isaiah 61, he says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me, number one, to preach good tidings to the meek. That word there is, the, it means poor, it means afflicted, it means the wretched of the earth, really. So, he has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor, he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. He has to proclaim liberty to the captives, the opening of prison doors to those who are bound. Those are the four main mandates. And when he comes back, he, you know, he stopped at a coma because he didn't come to proclaim vengeance. But the next coming, he comes to proclaim vengeance of the Lord and to wipe away the tears of those who mourn and to give beautiful ashes. Okay? But these four mandates, the first coming, that was his mandate. And that's what he reads. If you will turn with me, actually, we should read it in Luke chapter 4. <clears throat> and he says, I'll, I'll jump from 14, I'll go to 17. And he was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Okay? He sent me to heal the brokenhearted. The other side they said to bind up, but it's basically to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty for the captives, and the opening of recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who were oppressed. So, those in prison are actually the blind. Okay, they, they do not see. And, and they are those who are oppressed. That's the mandate. And to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. So, all that he went through was basically to bring this restoration. So, those four or five factors indicate the things that went wrong that he comes to deal with okay does that make sense so we know that the entire godhead had to come down in isaiah chapter 9 uh we're going to read about three four scriptures and then we'll start in isaiah chapter 9 if you turn with me to isaiah chapter 9 and uh, we will read from uh, verse, I want us to read from verse 1. He says, nevertheless, the gloom will not be upon her who is distressed, as when at first he, lighted, he lightly esteemed the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, and afterward more heavily oppressed her by the way of the sea beyond the Jordan, in the Galilee of the, the, Galilee of the Gentiles. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in the land of the shadow of death, upon them a light has come. You will also notice that he, it is stated just before, after the wilderness and after the temptation. That statement is made. Land of Zebulun and land of Naphtali, the way to the sea along the Jordan. Galilee of the Gentiles, the people who sat in darkness have seen a great light. 
of those who sat in the shadow of death, a light has dawned. And then he says, from that time on, Jesus began to preach, saying, repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. This is the scripture they quote. It's from Isaiah 9. And he says, you have multiplied the nation and increased this joy. They rejoice before you according to the joy of harvest, as men rejoice when they divide the spoil. For you have broken the yoke of his burden and the staff of his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, as in the day of Midian. Every warrior's, book, warrior's sandal from the noisy battle and garment rolled in blood will be used for burning and for fuel. Why? Because for unto us a child is born, and to us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. You have seen the names, okay? Wonderful. Do you, do you remember that? guy who appeared and they asked his name and he says, why do you ask my name? Seeing that is wonderful. In the book of Judges, there's a being that appears to Manoah. The birth of Samson. Come on, guys. Don't look at me like... <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay. In the birth of Samson, you see he's called there the angel. You know, wherever you hear the angel of the Lord in the Old Testament, uh, it's a Christophany. You know a Christophany? The appearance of Christ in the Old Testament. Every time you see the angel, there is an angel, but when you hear the angel of the Lord, for example, with Moses, okay? So that, that is the same thing. So he says his name is wonderful. So this actually his name. Counselor, that's the Holy Spirit. Mighty God. Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, and of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end upon the throne of David and over his kingdom to order it and establish judgment and justice from this time forward, even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will accomplish this. So this is the story of Christ's birth. One, we know that when Adam sinned and when God starts to pronounce judgment, when he pronounces judgment upon Satan, he says the seed of the woman will crush your head and you will strike his heel. Now everywhere else the seed is always the seed of a man. It's only in that place where they say the seed of the woman. Very interesting. And we know later on they explain that seed. Then they talk of the seed of Abraham as the generation has narrowed down. Okay? And Paul explains that that was none other than Christ in Galatians. That is given Galatians chapter 3. You go and read. So because man had sinned, and the Bible says the wages of sin is death. Everyone had to pay for himself. Because from one man came sin, and sin entered through the world, and death through sin, and death came to all men. Isn't it? Now, because of that, it meant that everyone who was born had sin already and had to pay. It wasn't uh, negotiable. Because if I give you my 1,000, you have to give me my 1,000. Because the wage of sin was death, it had to be paid by a man. So the book of Hebrews is very interesting. It explains why angels would not pay the price, neither animals. It had to be one who is a man. So God had to create a body. So he says, sacrifices and offerings you did not desire, but a body you prepared for me. So what God did was to come to Mary, you know the story, and borrow her womb. Hallelujah. And we know that the Holy Spirit came upon her and a baby began to grow. We also know that this seed was not for a man. That's why I say the seed of a woman. But we also know that the life of the animal is in the blood. Okay, so Adam's blood is not there. The doctors, biologists will tell you that the blood of the mother is certainly different from the blood of the baby. I'm glad we have uh, the best expert in the country, Dr. Sari. <laughs> Hallelujah. So those, those things are unknown science. So here we have 
somebody growing with new blood, with new God DNA, a child who was to be born, but the son was to be given. So you see that statement says, in verse 6 of Isaiah, if you can go back, 9, 6, he says to us, a child is born, and to us, a son is given. So the son was the son of God. He was given. He was never born. But the body who is the child is born. So he's called Jesus, that is the body of Jesus, the Christ who is the son. Okay? Do you get it? So it's called Jesus, the Christ. And you and I are now part of the body. So we are called the church. That's why the church is never called the body of Jesus. Because Jesus is actually also a body. He's the body of Christ. Because Christ is the spirit he's given. So he's born without sin. Are you following? Are you following the story? I said, because everyone had sin, it needed another who is human able to meet the requirement, but without sin. So Jesus comes and is now not of <clears throat> the blood of Adam. Is pure God DNA. But he, because the legal entry into the world is through the womb, he enters via the womb. So he's a man. So he says, I have authority to judge because I am the son of man. Do you understand that statement? That's why he makes that statement. And so he comes, he's born, he lives without sin. That's why he's tested in all ways. You can read Hebrews chapter 2. He said, because he himself was made like us, he had to be a merciful high priest. He had to be made like us, and he was tested in all ways so that he can know that, ah, I know how this feels. Angels can't understand that. But for him, he can. He bathed like you. He went to the toilet like you. He was hungry like you. He felt sad like you. He, all those things. Some of us think that maybe he was just born. He grew in wisdom. And because he had to be a man. The Bible says he grew in stature and in wisdom. He grew. He learned. He just didn't become a carpenter. He was taught. If you read Isaiah chapter 7, you, you see that he, before the child grows to differentiate right from wrong. So he grew to learn that there is right and there is wrong. That's the beauty of God. Hallelujah. And so there is no excuse. So after that, he was able to die and pay the price. Because the wage of sin is death. And only sin kills a man. Nothing else. Only sin kills a man. You are looking at me confused. Only sin kills a man. Before, you know, God told Adam, you, everything is in your power. But there is a fruit here. The day you sin or miss the mark, the word sin is missing the mark. The day you disobey, and eat of it. There is something you are not seeing, but it's there. It is called death. The day you sin, it will have access to you. You can't see it, can't touch it, can't measure it. It's a spirit, it's a person. That's why it says, death and hell are thrown into the lake of fire. Death is there, it's a personality. It's an occurrence, it's a spirit as well. So Adam could not see it, couldn't touch it, couldn't measure it, couldn't feel it. But the day he ate, the thing was activated. And it came after him. Because the wage of sin is death. And the power of death, the Bible says, is sin. So death didn't have power over 
Christ until he took your sin and my sin upon himself, then death could have power over him. So he goes on the cross and because he has taken on that sin, the Bible says he gave up his spirit and he died and paid the price. Hallelujah. And he was in the grave for how many days? <clears throat> Three. And he even went to hell, the Bible tells us. Oh, Hades, the word they used there. You know there are many words in English, they just say hell. There is Gehenna. There is Hades. There is Sheo. There are different words. Anyway, he went down. I can imagine Satan surprised as he's in shock. And the Bible tells us that he took the keys of death. Revelation tells us that. He says, I am the living one. I was dead and now I'm alive and I have the keys of death. Hallelujah. Where did he get them? He went and grabbed them. I can imagine Satan seated somewhere on his throne, ruling by oppression and bluff and lies. And the guy shows up kicks the door open and it's like what are you doing in our meeting he says I'm looking for something looks at him looks at him looks at him sees the bunch of keys this side death one key hell one key oppression one key I mean, guy nagwa hallelujah you are breaking the rules you're not supposed to be here he says no I have come. He says, but only sin is supposed to kill you. He said, all their sin I have collected. And I have it. <laughs> Hallelujah. And the Bible says when he ascended, he took captivity captive. And he gave gifts unto men. That's also in Isaiah, by the way. Hallelujah. The book of Isaiah is very interesting. We quote it in Ephesians, but it's from Isaiah. Even for the rebellious. Hallelujah. That he may dwell among us. That's what that scripture says. They don't add that in Ephesians. But he took captivity captive and he ascended. And the Bible tells us that when he arose from the dead, that many people Many people, who, righteous people who had died when he died, the graves were opened because he went and got the keys. And they appeared to many and they lived in cities. I suspect, it's just a suspicion, that that's why Joseph said, don't leave my bones in Egypt. Take me to Jerusalem. Take me. Hey, 400, you take my bones because he must have known that there is a hope coming. Because Job knew it. And Job is the oldest book. So those guys had the book of Job. They had access to it. Hallelujah. But the Bible says, I know that my Redeemer lives and in the end, I will see him because he will stand upon the earth with his own feet. And my very eyes will behold not anyone else but mine. So Joseph must have known and he said, Teva and And so when he ascended, they went with him as the first fruits. So I think after grabbing the keys, he went to the locals and he emptied the place. Hallelujah. And the Bible says, because he lives, you can face tomorrow. Hallelujah. Is it making sense? Well, that's why Jesus was born of a virgin birth. That's why he lived a sinless life. That's why he died. And these things he came to deal with and to restore to us what was lost. The kingdom of God. Make sense? And so those four marks which I read there imply the kingdom of God is not fully at work in that area. Number one is poverty. Number two is brokenheartedness. 
Number three is captivity or blindness. So in, in Luke, they will talk about blindness and you can compare with Simon the sorcerer. You remember in the book of Acts when Peter confronts that guy who wanted to buy the Holy Spirit and he says, I can see that you're a bitter man, captive. And you think you can buy the Spirit. So that is the captivity they are talking of. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And prison. Those who are bound, those who are in prison. Hallelujah. And many people are in prisons. Not the physical one, because even those are there. Hallelujah. But there are many prisons in life which God opens. There are things where unless God moves. So every time you see poverty, you know the kingdom of darkness is at work. Every time you see broken heartedness, brokenness in homes, brokenness in marriages, brokenness in families, brokenness in a society, the kingdom of darkness is at work. Every time you see captivity or blindness, bitterness, jealousy, malice, those are all expressions of captivity. Captive to anger, captive to bitterness, captive to malice, okay? Injustice, you know the kingdom of, 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 of darkness is at work. You can uh, project Isaiah 61. Verse, verse 1 to see those things. And every time you see people who are bound, bound by witchcraft, bound by certain traditions, how come Balongo only choose Africans? You know, in hospital, we used to have, they would say, Ebinyo. And I used to wonder, they would brush the, the child's uh, thing open the skin and sepsis just comes. So the child comes when they are septic. I remember there is a guy who came to the clinic. You see prison. The child was anemic. Malaria. Basic malaria. Just simple malaria. I think the HB was like one or two. All he needed was a transfusion. The man refused the child from being injected, he said it in Otalo because he was looking white. Pala, basically anemia. Any doctor will tell you, even an intern knows that's anemia, anemia, anemia. Pale, pepper white. The guy jammed. He refused. He said, Omwana wangite mukuba ampiso, erio oba talo. They call it talo. He jammed. He said, erio talo, we mukuba ampiso again akufa. They explain to the man. They, meanwhile, the child is entering heart failure. They explain to the man. The Nsambia here. As an intern at that time. Until they said, sign here that you have refused. The man signed, got his child, went. Soon as he reached the gate, the child began to grasp, gasp for air. He ran him back and said, but now munyambe. So now guys are rushing. They want to uh, try. He said, na yete mumukuba piso munyambe. Until the child actually died. There in OPD. And the man took off. Can you imagine ignorance, tradition, prison, do you get it? Every time you see such things, you know captivity. Captivity. Attitudes. Hallelujah. You know there are traditions where the auntie has to sleep with the husband of the girl. You know that? To ascertain that the man is really potent. There are traditions where the father has to sleep with the bride Yes. Can you imagine? Captivity. Captivity. So every time you see such things, that's why Christ came. Poverty. 
the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the good tidings or good news to the poor. Don't say that the poor in the spirit. That word poor, it means material poverty. You read it. It means destitute. Because by you lacking, you somehow can't fulfill destiny. Many of us have dreams because the Bible says he has made everything beautiful in its own time. He has put eternity in our hearts. That's why you have those dreams and aspirations. Things that you can't explain, but you're just passionate about children. You say, He's a fact. So poverty just curtails destinies, dreams. And the Bible says hope deferred makes the heart sick. Then your heart becomes sick. Emotionally and eventually physically. Go be the cardiologist. Dr. Tony. Kumbe wavu webu kuruma. Unfortunately. <coughs> it's a reality. So when Christ comes, he says he's coming to restore. Restore. Now, restoration is a process. Okay? The first thing is he brings... Yeah, we still have a good time. Just started. By 11, I promise you will be out of here. Na yete tuagala mubeleba captives. Hallelujah. When he says he came to restore or to redeem, to redeem means to buy back. He's called the kinsman redeemer. Read the book of Ruth. You know the book of Ruth is talking about Christ? Actually, all books. But it's a very interesting book. It's ab about how he redeems the Gentiles. Okay, that's the book of Ruth. That's the whole story. But a redeemer buys back. To buy back is to redeem. To restore means to put back in the original position. Now, I'll show you something. If I am going to ginger, then I find myself taking a wrong turn and I am in Chengera. It means I'm going the opposite direction. Correct? <clears throat> So the first step in restoration is to change my direction so that I face back. Imagine we are to set off at 9. Now it is 10.30 and I'm in where? It means the guys who are headed to, if let me say we are going to Tororo, they are already somewhere in Iganga. Are you getting it? Me, I'm where? In Chengera. So because I'm in Chengida, I first need to change direction. So the change of direction is called repentance. Repent means change the way you think. Change your direction. So when he comes, he says, repent because the kingdom of, of heaven has arrived. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? That is the first step. You repent because those things that are, are holding you, in a way, they are related to transgression, sin, or iniquity. We know the difference. When we say repent, it means you change direction. If you were doing certain things, you do them no longer. You turn so if you, he says, let him who was stealing, steal no longer. He has changed. Then he says, but let him work with his own hands. That's step two, but we'll come to that. So you change. So he says, change the way you are thinking. Because your thinking is going to change your actions. If you are sleeping around, he's saying, repent, change. Because in the kingdom of heaven, that's not how we live. It has a certain culture, tradition, laws, and regulations. Make sense? If you are cohabiting, he's saying change. Katitani kukugamba anti man, muami. Omanyinti tetwe yanjula. Tije. Echitegeza tulimubucham. 
tie kati mangu mangu take it okutano ligamba ona your father and mother that it what it may be well with you in the land that you're going and that you may live long it is the first commandment with a promise very simple as that is top 10 so don't start to explain genda gambo mwami wandi ke balua it many of the parents bako wadabamanyi toya tolinana cholina they just want you to go and say you know what this is the man who we eloped with amazima he didn't introduce me because you are in transgression now let me show you sin transgression it means there are boundaries then he said he has transgressed i have overstepped a boundary okay okay sin is missing the mark for example fornication is sin okay adultery is sin and transgression because i am to have sexual relations is allowed but in a boundary of marriage so when i do this i have overstepped the boundary so i have transgressed you understand that iniquity is sin of generations but that word also means gross injustice like how the king uh, josiah uh, turned against jehoiada he sinned he transgressed he com he got iniquity so now that one has generational implications like sorcery witchcraft iniquity like killing somebody and then you take his property iniquity do you get the difference gross injustice generational sin that's iniquity okay so he's saying you are going to change we are dealing with restoration because this is a season of restoration so if i change direction if i was stealing i still no longer but now my attitude must change and say but now how will i live have a wife so he says let him work so you change your action and change the way you think that's the first write it down repentance is the first step in restoration make sense now if you have changed it means the liar is no longer lying the thief is no longer stealing the adulterer has settled himself the the cohabiting person has said man season in utim peter could buy much to know about to chigat the war are you seeing the fornicator has said man <laughs> instead of let me just marry paul said that let if you are burning with lust just marry Janguano is not to gamut, who is a little Baluaya Bazadi, but you could have the Tineda Soko Genoyo Gerenabo, but you could have OJ. Ah, Catitulina permission of Kugataba to Moyoganda. So we just put you here, your parents are there. We will cut cake for you. Ten minutes, fifteen, one hour. Ah, now it's you who says you want a white wedding, black wedding, those things, but for us, we know that you have sorted yourself. You have introduced, the parents have blessed you. Ah, you don't have problems then you will soon discover that <laughs> it is not enough you still need to work <laughs> hallelujah now after that after you turn away and you change the way you think the way you think should reflect the heavenly thinking so you begin to erase the system of the world and you begin to load the software of heaven hallelujah so that you can now have an OS that is heavenly. But the OS must be the correct one. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It means you are going to say, I am going to remove Microsoft, just giving an example, and I load Linux. I am going to remove Linux. If the heavenly one is, is iOS and I load iOS. Then after you load, you say now what are the correct applications? So now you start to add. 
So Second Peter chapter 1 verse 5 he say, says there are four giving all diligence make sure you add to your faith okay because you have believed make sure that you add to your faith you add virtue from virtue you add knowledge because a lack of knowledge will kill you from knowledge you add self control which is called temperance from self control you add patience from patience you are going to add godliness from godliness you are going to add brotherly kindness from God, brotherly kindness you are going to love, add love and he says that if you possess these things and they are in increasing measure another version says they are bound they will make you that you shall not be barren you will not be unproductive you will be fruitful in your knowledge of Jesus Christ does that make sense so if you are going to redeem you know we love to say i'm redeeming the years because what Satan did was to make you waste years. Actually, the main thing you redeem is time. Not things. It's time. So he says in Joel chapter 2, verse around 25. You can start from 20. He's talking about blah, blah, blah. And then, of course, he goes and uh, talks about also pouring out the spirit. But he says, I will restore the years that were lost, that were eaten by the locusts. And the what? The canker worms. Okay? The, the great caterpillar, the small caterpillar. D did you know that those, the, the years can be eaten? So they are not talking about things, houses, what? No. It is years. So now in this redemption, it is not just changing direction. When you change direction, you're still in change. Now you're moving at 20. Okay? So he says, you renew your mind. Add these things. Now what these things do is to give you acceleration. So that if you are moving on a bicycle, if you were supposed, or in a car, if you were, you, they, you were supposed to set off at nine, we expect by one you should be in Tororo. But now it is 1030. You have just left change get you on the northern bypass. The other guys are in Iganga. What you need is a helicopter. So that because restoration is positioning. So that you are moved and you buy back that time. So that by one, if not twelve, you are in Tororo. And they say, How did the man arrive? That's the miracle of restoration. There is a, a, a scripture. It is in 2 Kings. You can read from four about the Shunammite woman. We know that story from verse 7 going down. That the one who, who perceived that Elijah was a prophet, then after invited him, then he put a house and whatever, and he attracted favor. That's for another time. Later on, we know that when, when, when he did what? We know that there was a famine in now chapter 8 and Elijah, Elisha comes and warns him and warns her and says, please, a famine is going to be here for seven years. God has called for famine. You find a place to go. For, so she goes. Now, in verse 6, she comes back and at that time, by sheer coincidence, Gehazi is talking to the king about the things that Elijah Elisha has done. And he says, tell me what Elisha has done. He did this. He raised a widow. A woman is a child from death. There was a barren woman. Then the woman at that time walks in. At the right moment. And, he, and the king and Gehaz says, this is the woman I'm talking about. And then the woman explains. And the king says, go. Can you project uh, uh, Second Kings chapter 8? Verse uh, six. Second Kings chapter eight. Verse six. Can we read? And when the king asked the woman, she told him. So the king appointed unto her a certain officer, saying, "Do what? Saying, do what? 
all that was hers and all the fruit of the field since the day she left the land even until now. So there was what was due to her, but she was away. She had taken it in another direction. So when they say restoration, it's not just going katiwaloko katotambula, no tambulira mubulumi. You know that uh, salvation can be tight. Otambulira mubulumi. You are still in bitterness. Your family is still broken. Your mom is like. So when they say restoration, you buy back all that. Took take a mu helicopter or mu concord. Or better still, we can put you in the space shuttle. Do you know the speed of that thing? When they are gaining the escape velocity, first of all, escape velocity is at about 11. The thing travels at 11 kilometers a second. 11. Ta! Iye gayaza. Ta! E manyangwa ya ise. Ta! E yoleke demukonu. That is the speed we are talking about. Momentum. Hallelujah. It is not just changing the direction, then you stay walking. Because with, when you're ignorant, you can actually be saved and you are wallowing in those four things. I've told you, those are the marks that show the kingdom of darkness is at work in your life. Poverty, number one. Brokenheartedness, number two. Captivity, number three. Prison, number four. Or blindness. So when they start to talk restoration, you are going to look and say, how does my restoration look like? How do I back, buy back time? So they say the restore all the things that were has and the fruit from the day she left even until now. With interest. Restoration. Are you getting it? Are you getting it? I'll give you a personal testimony. When I went to study out, I think I went 2009. Man, I don't know if I'm going to encourage my son to study medicine, but anyway, it is okay. The thing is just long. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'd, I'd been 2002, I was at university burning books. I burnt books 2007. You're just finishing. Then they tell you you have to gain a year of internship. Then you intern. And after that, they say now, for you to just do anything, you need to add some three. So you add a master's. Now for you, you're thinking you're a mukugu. And now when they finish, they say, now you are teachable. For you to really be thorough. So you add. Amen. That's how it is. I'm sure Dr. here would know. For you to be a specialist at his level. A miyakori no coach, you must do and then add, add a fellowship. You keep learning, and by the way, you don't even stop reading. Otherwise, medicine changes. Every two years, it has changed. Protocols have changed. There is a new body of information. So, you come back. Now, I go out and I study 2009, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So I come back and the country is different. But guys, others were already married, families, they started businesses, they are basically moving. Me, I know nobody. You have to establish yourself. And those who have studied outside, especially in medicine for long, would relate with that story. So you are new in the place. How do you start? We try try the business there. And then we settled. Now when you come back, they required me to do another year to get used basically to the local diseases and what for them to, to, to register my doctorate. I said, so I came in another one, 2017. I started when 2002. Are you, are you getting me? Are you getting me? 
Are you getting me? So when, this is just, just a side note. If you go to a doctor, na kugambe no procedure ya million ya abiri, toka ya na. Don't, don't say it is too expensive because you don't know the time the man has put. I'm just being honest. Take I as Cain 14. Tana take a experience for them to really set it. That is an experience. Dr. Olimu Abiri. Amen. So what God does is to say, I am going to restore the years. So for me, I can testify it is real restoration. Within two years, the things that I never imagined about. I remember when we came, we didn't even, I said, we are not going to live in my parents' home. We lived in the boys' court. Said, no, 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 this is not acceptable. <coughs> so we moved and rented. I am not a fan of free things. They make you lazy and not to think. We moved and rented. It was a tough life. But in two years, by 2019, God had, by sheer miracle, where we never imagined, given us a home, given us businesses, moved us, and by 2020, we were far ahead of our peers by far who had been working since 2005 because 2002 three four you have finished if you're doing a three-year course five graduate and can't work that is restoration so he says what were your dreams i wanted to have uh, at least let me have a family Hallelujah. Ah, you want children? Ah, nabakua. What else do you want? I want a good child. My prayer, by the way, was I'm coming to Uganda. I don't want thieves. I, I, I just said, man, which church am I going to pray from? Because when you're out, everything you see, pastor, yako zechino, oh no, ya bie, oh yeah. So I was like, man, where will we pray from? Guys, looks like things changed down there. But look how I find people who are genuine, People who are honest, you don't hear that so and so has eloped with the other one's wife. Is he looking at? Have you ever heard that an elder has he looked at a choir member? <laughs> uh, just being honest. No, you take that for granted. Just move around. I don't need to mention names. The pastor has gone with the other cheek. You don't hear of such things. This one has run with a bag of money. No, Tetrubidina. So for me, that is better than money. People who are genuine. Friends who love the Lord. And then people who have knowledge. I, 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 me, I thrive in knowledge, thinking, capacity. So you find you, are, you have people who are God-fearing. They, they love knowledge. They are excellent. And they are doing great things. That's restoration. Because it takes time to build friendship. Can you imagine you build meaning friend, meaningful friendships in two years? And they are really meaningful friendships and they are genuine friendships, and they are useful, that is restoration. I said, good, at least I want a home. I don't want to be a doctor begging, begging like that, the broke doctor. No, I don't want to be like that. I should drive the car I want. I should be able to take my children to the school I want. Basics. Restoration. For me, they didn't even put me in a helicopter. It was slow. You know, there are some motorcycles that run faster than helicopters. He <laughs> said, the helicopter, God, no, no, I don't need a helicopter. I need a jet. Hey, not those things. You know, the, you know those the Iranian drones that have motorcycle engines. Uh, uh, <laughs> answers like, sweet. They've now said they've made hypersonic weapons. Five kilometers a second. Three. So, when we are talking restoration, God is able to move you in your latter years or to restore the things. If you say, I didn't have a father, God can be able to restore that and put people in your life who will impact you in two years for, with knowledge that you'd have needed in 20. That's now restoration. All the things that were has, 
all the fruit of the field since the day you were born. Everything that the devil had taken. Because what he's interested in is your time. Hallelujah. And that's what Christ comes to do. To restore. To restore. So this season, make up your mind to, to be restored. And when you are going to be restored, the key thing you're going to mind is time. Don't not the things, the time you have lost. The time you have lost. What has been eaten by the caterpillars, the canker worms, the, the big locusts, the great ones. So for you, imagine things eating leaves. No. They don't eat leaves. They eat years. They eat years. I, I remember, I think two months ago, I explained. If you remember the, the, the dream of Pharaoh, and Joseph interpreting it, Genesis 41. You can read 40, 41, it will give you context. And Pharaoh says, I saw seven fat cows, seven thin ones, the thin ones ate the fat ones. Then I saw seven ears of corn that were okay, seven ears that were thin. The thin ones ate the other ones. And Joseph came and said, the dream is the same. He's talking about years, time. The fat ones are good, healthy. But these ones are going to come and eat up the other years. So years can be eaten up. He says you'll even forget that you ever had anything. Hallelujah. Then he begins to give wisdom. Because the Bible says that he made Joseph a father of Pharaoh. And by all means, the father is greater than the son. We know that. So Joseph was greater than Pharaoh. He says to teach the elders of Egypt wisdom and to bind their princes as he wished. If a prince erred, bind him up. That is the level of elevation. Hallelujah. But he told Pharaoh, if you do nothing, the locusts, the canker worms are going to eat your ears. What you need is to plan. What you need is knowledge how the system works. You're going to put aside 20%, a fifth. What you need is to know how to deal with it. So my friend, when we are talking restoration, number one, you need to repent, to turn away. If you're not saved, you need salvation. You need salvation so that you start on that journey. You stop going towards Jengera and turn. Make sense? Number two, you need a renewal of your mind. You need to change the way you think. Don't think impossibilities. God acts by faith, so you need to think by faith. In God's vocabulary, there is nothing impossible. For with God, there shall be nothing impossible. Luke 147. Hallelujah. To her who has believed, there will be a fulfillment of those things that were told her. You start to live by faith. The kingdom of God is justice and righteousness. So a righteous life. So he says in Romans 12, I urge you, brethren, in view of God's mercy, that you do what? Offer your body as living sacrifices, holy and acceptable to him. This is your reasonable act of worship or sacrifice. So you're going to offer your body. Your body. That's why I talked of things like stealing, anger, the things we can't see. Because you are now working, you can afford to rent, sleep with whomever you want, come back on Sunday and be holy. <laughs> and you think you have won. You have not won anyone. You have lost. Anyway. Stealing, being unjust, mistreating people. Those are things God is dealing with. He says, remove those. Okay? Then he says, now, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That you may test and see what God's will is. His good, pleasing, perfect will. So now you start to think about the will of God. Interestingly, in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 14, he says, wake up. Oh, sleeper, arise from the dead and Christ will shine on you. Then he says you should be very careful how, how you live. Not as fools, but as wise. Okay? Redeeming the time. For the days are evil. So, when you change, he says then find out God's will. So that you redeem the time. So now you move from the realm of just turning the journey to saying, but what is the will of God for my life? Are you writing those points? By the way, I'm making many. 
I have talked of repentance. I'm talking of a change in mind. I have, uh, I have now talked of now finding out what the will of God is for your life. The general will is what we are speaking of. Righteousness, holiness, sanctification, doing good, kindness, that's general. Then there is a specific one. What is God's will for Alan? That you find out by yourself. So that you are aligned. Because he says, we know that all things work together for good of those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. So you need to be in obedience, which is to love God, and to walk according to the purpose of God. Then things will work for you. Outside of that, they will work against you. So if you are going to change it up, things work against you. If the direction is this way, they start to work for you. Okay? Then I have said last day that you start to add. Because now Christ has restored you. He has given you a new hope. He has brought back dominion. He has brought back a kingdom. As he said, as he promised, that he will have a virgin birth, he will live a sinless life, he will die, and so take out our enemies and now give us a new hope and a new life. So now you begin to add so that you now have complete restoration, which is now acceleration. So what is going to accelerate it to you? Virtue. Virtue, I think in Luganda is answer. Goodness inside you. Character, in other words. I think that's the closest that you can, in modern English, character. So to your faith, add character. Are you reliable? Are you loyal? Are you honest? Can you be trusted? Do things. Are you kind? Do you treat people well? That's virtue. It is what attracts people to you. Virtue is related to the salt of the earth. And I explained that some Sundays ago. That when they talk about salt, it is the virtue. It is unseen in food, but it is tested. When somebody is near you, do they get peace? He says, let your speech be seasoned with what? Salt. So what is in your heart, in other words? Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. You add to virtue knowledge. Knowledge is the information, and with it goes understanding and wisdom, the correct application of knowledge, which is wisdom. So you add, nobody is going to open your head and pour knowledge. That I have inherited my father's degree. My son has nothing to do with my degrees. I burnt my books. That is his problem. He has to sweat also through the thing. Amen. Am I making sense? You don't inherit knowledge. You learn. So if you have a good teacher, thank God. A good mentor, thank God. The sooner you find one, the better. And what God does is to leave us examples. Older people in our midst. So that you observe. You don't need to go and talk to them. You observe. The Bible says in a... Hebrews, yes, Hebrews chapter 6, verse 12. He says, Therefore, let us be imitators of them who by, who through what? Faith and patience inherit what? So they are a them that God puts in our midst. Hallelujah. That's why God leaves older people. Because they have experiences, they have made mistakes, they have succeeded. So he leaves them among you so that you look and you say, mm, I want to pattern my life like this. You don't, this idea that I'm self-made, I don't know where we got it. You just emerged from the ashes like a phoenix. No. Nobody just emerges. Hallelujah. They are mentors, they are fathers, they are mothers. So you begin to say, knowledge, I want to learn. From who? Somebody. You know that the other guy said, send somebody, uh, Father Abraham, send somebody from the dead to warn my brothers so that they don't come to this bad place. He said, no. They have teachers up there. They have the law. They have things that are written. Now for if things are written and you're not reading, I uh, was telling my wife that this laziness of, of me saying, ah, ah, I don't like reading, out, 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 out. 
I have to read by force. Because there is a blessing that comes by reading. I hope we know that. We know that. In Revelation, it talks about blessed is the one who reads the words of this book. Katigobate wasoma. Already you are at a disadvantage. Thank God there is adult school. Two months you can learn to read and write. Two. At most three. Go learn to read. Because there is a blessing. There is knowledge you will get by just reading. By being taught. There is a protocol. He says, look at salvation. He says that everyone who calls Romans chapter 10. It's with our mouth we confess our hearts we believe unto salvation. And then he says, how will they hear if nobody tells them? But how will we tell if you are not being sent? Okay? So there is a sequence that somebody will believe after hearing, after being taught. But the one who teaches must be sent. So there are sent ones among us. They are there. There are people who know business. There are people who understand marriage. There are people who just know how to solve problems. They are there. You are without excuse. Hallelujah. No, God puts elders among us. He puts people who have lived. That's why people live up to 90. A hundred. Because at that time you're not even walking. But you are there as testament that God is able to do good. You are there to dispense knowledge. You are a store of experiences. When they talk world war, you say, no, I was there. I was there when they invaded Berlin. And I saw what happened. Then we know war is bad. You know they tell us now this generation that we, are, we don't understand what we are saying when we talk about peace. Those who were there will keep saying, you'll be cut dead. They're saying, my friend, you won't do that business when there is a bullet flying around. You'll have to run. Relax. That's why elders are there. So we learn from them on that journey. Those are things that give you acceleration. Then he says, add self-control. Because self-control is your protection. A man without self-control is like a city without walls. So, you, when you say, Mokama, nete kakoawo, chiwolo, o murido guchochi, no, no, self control. <laughs> Amen. Self control. Because you're going to say certain things that are going to offend somebody because you're angry. You're going to make certain decisions because you can't control your temper or you can't control your appetites. You spend everything. I used to have friends who would earn the same, 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 same stipend. Mid-month, they are borrowing from me. They are broke. Variable. The Bible says that in the house of the wise, there are stores of choice items, of oil and pressure things. But a fool, it's everything he has. But there are no fools here. <laughs> it's the ones outside. You eat everything. Self-control. Now, how do you expect to progress? Hallelujah. Joseph told them, you want to save yourself from the locusts eating the years? 20% you put aside, 20. As an investment. Now, you, you want restoration. And money is never enough. There is what they call Parkinson's law. Did you know there is a law that talks about money and increasing, it's called Parkinson's law. You guys li like reading. Or if you don't like, you go and read. I've told you about the importance of reading. Parkinson's law says when money increases, the needs increase to fit the amount. That's why when you are earning 500,000 was enough, one million is not enough, two million is certainly not enough. And when it becomes 10, it is too little. Parkinson's law. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Can you imagine when you earn a hundred that you have to tithe 10 million? It's a tag of who isn't it? Now you earn a billion. Tuksango zizize kokama mukama. Omuntu ya agure kuploti endala. Let's stand up. 
So, I wish you a very happy celebration. <coughs> I want to pray. I hope we prepare the mic. I would want Dr. Sally to come and say hello at the end. So please prepare us a mic. Yeah, okay, there is uh, one prepared there. I, w I want you to remember that salvation is not the end. It's just the beginning. Hallelujah. It's a step of restoration. It is putting us back to where God wants us to have a relationship with him. That's what he wanted with Adam. In the cool of the day, they would talk. And for you to manage on his behalf, hallelujah, for you to be a steward, it is required of stewards that a man be found faithful. And so God requires that. Amen. And so when he puts you on that journey, restoration means that the process has begun. That you're going to change your ways and change to God. If you've been cheating, people cheat no longer. If you've been quarrelsome, change, my friend. Secondly, you're going to change your way of thinking. So you're going to add knowledge. You're going to study the word. You're going to start living by faith. You're going to live in love. You're going to say that when you lend, expect not to be paid. When you borrow, pay back quickly. You give to whoever asks you. And whoever wants to borrow, do not turn away. Hallelujah. You're going to start saying, ah, Molesa, it is okay. I have forgiven. You're going to change. Hallelujah. Then you're going to add certain aspects, which I have talked of in uh, Second Peter chapter 1, verse 5, uh, going onwards, so that you can now have acceleration. And what God does is to buy you back years. And I have said that on this journey, God gives us elders, he gives us fathers, he gives us mothers, and he places them in our midst, in our community, in our churches, that they may be examples for you that you can imitate through patience, through perseverance, hallelujah, hallelujah, and by faith, so that you also may obtain the promises of God. Father, we want to thank you, we want to honor you, we want to bless you. We thank you for today. We believe that you have spoken to us, and as we enter a new year, we know that we have stepped into a season, Lord God, that is restoring us back. We remember that in 2018, we were in a similar place. And Lord, now every indication indicates that the cycle has come back. It's a season where there is miraculous provision. It is a season where the old is gone and the new has come. It's a season where uh, uh, what prisons are opened. It's where broken, -hearted are broken hearts are mended. Where captives are set free. Where the poor, Lord God, are lifted from the ash heap, O oh Lord, and, and seated with princes and, 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 uh, and kings. Lord, this is our prayer. And as we go today, we pray that you be with every man. Everyone who, 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 who needs a home, Lord, grant them a home. Everyone who is praying for peace, grant them peace. Everyone who is praying for a spouse, grant them a spouse. Everyone who is believing that their children will be okay grant them the desires of their hearts everyone who is bring, believing for the salvation of a loved one father grant them whoever is believing lord for the restoration of their family for the union of their family some are addicts some are, 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 are unbothered but lord restore them we thank you O lord god we praise you O lord god we honor you O lord god in jesus mighty name hallelujah Hallelujah. I want to invite doctor to come and uh, say hello. And then after that, the moderator will come and uh, will close. Amen. Doctor, please, you're welcome. God, hallelujah. Merry Christmas, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We thank you, Pastor Tony, for the word. It's so nice to see you. We are being restored, hallelujah. The old has passed, and behold, the new is here. Thank you for the word which is ongoing. And may this word this coming year, the word of God be activated into each and every one of our lives as we reach out to the captives and 
we bring them in the church. Thank you very much for blessing us. Hallelujah. We love you. Hallelujah. Pastor Tony, thank you so much. Uh, greetings from uh, my family. Greetings from uh, last week we've been to U.S. to the burial of uh, our daughter of uh, the founder of the of Gospel Church. You know the full Gospel Church, uh, uh, even this church came through that one. The founder, uh, as we are reading the scripture, Isaiah 61, uh, that scripture that will glide tidings or good news. So in 1948, um, one pastor in Vancouver had a dream. This wasn't a dream, it was a vision. And they saw the word Uganda. Uganda. So that time, you can imagine 1948. There were no Google Maps, there was nothing. So <laughs> they went and looked at dictionary and they found actually the encyclopedia that there was Uganda was a country. So, and the pastor, the senior pastor, Lezel, he convinced, God showed him that they had to send missionaries to Uganda. And that's how the church for gospel, Glad Tidings Temple, was founded. And uh, now this daughter uh, of this Bamita uh, Jaji and those Jajawe, this daughter, Yaluan August, September, August, it was staying with us. And uh, when she went back in uh, October, she suddenly got leukemia and has died. So we went there for burial. So we thank God that uh, we're able to celebrate with them, these people who brought the gospel. You and me, maybe you wouldn't be here to hear the gospel. If I not accept Jesus as my savior, 1964, probably I wouldn't be here also. But thank God that because of Jesus, we're remembering today, that Jesus was born 2021 years ago, and we are here to celebrate his, his, uh, his birth, to just to remember that he came and he brought good news to us. We are, I was actually in captivity, I was a prisoner way back, way back in Masaka, walking 20 miles, return journey, going to school, Every day, going back, coming back home at about nine o'clock, and then I'd wake up at five to go back to, to make the same journey. And those days, we feared animals, El, you know, lions, maybe leopards on the way. This was a perception. So my mother used to give me somebody to take me to school up to a certain point, and then he return. So when I remember those on God has taken me from that. To, took me from the, that one. I used to be the probably the last person in the class because of those problems. But when the gospel came, 1960, my sister got saved and she preached to me and I got saved. Hallelujah. See how the gospel, when you preach the gospel, when you witness to people, you, people's lives will be restored. People's lives will be restored. The gospel will make you rich, not only in money, but in many. God can give you long life, can give you wisdom. I remember in 2003, I landed at the airport with $20. No, I, I came with $20. When I arrived in the airport, I had only $20 in 2003. But God has restored everything. Hallelujah. Just lastly, the story of the Christmas, uh, remember when the wise men came looking for Jesus, they saw a star, and that star, through satellite, they brought them to where Jesus was born. How many of you have got smartphones? Can you put up your smartphone? Those who have got smartphones. We call them smartphones. 
because they are guided, everything is now on satellite. People can know where I am. Somebody in America would know Dr. Sally is in the church at this location. They can even send a drone, drone to either do some good or bad or bring me food. <laughs> the wise men, the story of satellite, the story of digital technology was there before, through the wise men. People used to think the world is flat. But you see, the wise men came looking for Jesus. Even today, only wise people are looking for him. Are you one of them? When we were in America recently, the pastor was driving the car. This pastor who's lost his wife, she took us to Rocky Mountains and was becoming dark and he's lost his way. So he spoke to the set, to his phone. He spoke to the, what do you call this one? The Google map in the car. He says, uh, please get me to this place. He didn't even press any button. He just spoke to it. And it guided us where to our hotel. Can you imagine? The story of Christmas, the story of Jesus is amazing. 700 years before he was born, prophet uh, Isaiah predicted. It's not, never been anybody in the whole world who has ever been predicted that he will be like this, will be like this, except Jesus. That's what makes me to, to know that we are following. Jesus is real. Jesus is God. Jesus is, is a savior. Jesus is God. Wonderful. Mighty God. God has got so many, about 7,000 names of God. Some of them will find them there. About 7,000. I don't know, maybe less than that, but 7,000 names of God. Jesus is wonderful. And today, let us rejoice that we've been redeemed from our sins. Hallelujah. That's, that's the story of Christmas, that Jesus came and has redeemed us from our sins. And Jesus, by the way, he was the first surrogate. The first surrogate. I do fertility, met as pastors told you. And uh, the one first introduced surrogates in Uganda. And uh, we've done about 2,000 surrogates. And all these surrogates, they are actually they are carrying somebody's baby. And Mary was carrying, was used. God can use you to, to carry something. God can use you to go and preach the gospel in Mbale or whatever. God is just a messenger. And Jesus, we know, he was a first surrogate because he didn't have a seed of a man, no seed of a woman. As if you did DNA on Jesus, you would not find anything. You find because his God is the one who made everything. But he used this woman, Mary, to be used to carry him so that he becomes a man to show us he went through all the struggles we go through. But at the end he said, I have overcome, be of good cheer. Hallelujah. Be of good cheer. Because Jesus has overcome everything. People who worship Mary and they call her what, 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 I think they are wrong. They should be worshiping Jesus. Hallelujah. Some of us who came from that religion, worshiping, you shouldn't worship man, shouldn't worship a pastor. I've seen some people worshiping pastors, even in Uganda. They're carrying their Bibles, they're kneeling down, and this is a shame. It is not in the Bible. Only person we have to worship is Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because he came... He made you to be a person. He took you from where you were to give you eternal life. May God bless you as we celebrate this season, amazing season. In Jesus' name.
Thank you very much, Dr. Salia. Auntie Kate, just one minute. For those of you who have not met Dr. Salia and Auntie Kate, these are our parents here in Kisasi as House of Revival. <laughs> Amen. First time visitors, or, or, or those who became permanent visitors, these are our parents. But also, they are the chief evangelists of House of Revival because they are always out there <laughs> on the move from one corner of the world to another corner of the world, touching people, blessing them, and impacting lives. We love you very much. It was nice seeing you. Merry Christmas. Dr. Sadi, can you just pray for our offering before you go? Amen, amen, amen. Amen, church. Uh, once again, I, I ask you to appreciate our teacher today. It's not easy preaching on Christmas Day. <laughs> People are thinking about many things. <laughs> Those who are disappointed are thinking. Those who are surprised are thinking. But it's all well. Amen. Thank you so much, Dr. Tony, and thank you so much for that teaching and reminding us that we, we, whether we like it or not, by fire, by force, we must read. Amen? Restoration. May God restore you. May God restore me. May God restore all of us. Amen? As you prepare to, oh, you're already giving, please go ahead and give. Go ahead, as you give, Mike and Lydia, are you here? Can you please come, come to the front in a minute? Our second service and third service will be live on YouTube, but no, not here physically, so you can catch them on YouTube, whatever you may be, okay? You can catch today's service on YouTube at your own convenience. We shall be meeting again on 31st December. Please come up here. On 31st of December, for our crossover night, starting 9.30 p.m. And there will be no other service the next day on the 1st January. So after the overnight, you can go and uh, wind down relax and look into 2023 Michael and Lydia are members of this church and graciously serve in the worship team those of you who are here in today's service you you enjoyed Lydia's delivery they are having a very, very, very special music show tomorrow in Chengera. I know that Chengera was used as an example in the message, but in this context, in this context, you're all welcome to Chengera. <laughs> you're all welcome to Chengera tomorrow, Boxing Day. There'll be a family gospel concert at Rose Garden at Rose Garden. The entrance is 10,000 shillings for adults, 5,000 for kids, 50,000, 30,000 for VIP, and 300,000 shillings a table. In the event that you are not able to go to that show, gift somebody a ticket. In your neighborhood, in your home, 
Somebody you know. Gift them with what? They will come and tell you the story. Okay? You can buy the tickets outside in the tent. The events manager is there. <laughs> Tasha, <laughs> Tasha. <laughs> Tasha is, has the tickets, but I want to encourage you to go to the show. If you, can't, if you really can't go to the show, gift somebody a ticket to go to the show. I'd like to ask them to say something about the show and promise us that it's going to be it's going to be off the hook. Maybe even an acapella. Who wants an acapella? An acapella? Yes, so, eh, you know, for us, we are Ugandans. When you go to the market <laughs> to buy ginats, <laughs> this time it is the music show. Please, sample us, sample us. <laughs> The stars are brightly shining It is the night of our dear Savior's birth Long lay the world in sin and error So felt its worth. I dream of hope. The weary one rejoices for yonder breaks and new and glorious morn. Guys, can you join in and sing? to pay for the show. <laughs> Michael and Lydia, her husband and wife, these are their children. Yes. They are going to be joined by a group of artists, including Bogembe, yes. Exodus, who, the flyers are there. There are going to be many artists performing at this function. Michael Holly, do you want to invite these people to the function? Yes. Thank you so much for this great opportunity. Praise the Lord, ladies and gentlemen. By the way, for me and my family, we shall be there. Amen. <laughs> in, in, in full, full, full what? Uh, almost everything. He has said everything. But we are so grateful that we have a church, we have a family. You know, many gospel artists are out there, but they don't have where they come from. They don't have a father, a spiritual father, a spiritual mother. But we just want to thank God that we have a home, we have our pastors, our parents, our leaders, and we are not alone. Hallelujah. Uh, the truth is, it's God that has organized this concert. It is God. Because it takes a lot, but really God has made it possible. So we kindly invite you all Join with us and let's lift yeah, the name of our Lord Jesus on high. We are, we are doing shows just to preach the gospel and to see that our God is magnified in all ways. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much. Amen. Did you want to say something? Yes, I did. All. For those of you who don't know where Chengara is, the easiest route is Northern Bypass. You take the Northern Bypass, up to where it ends, where it meets the Entebbe Express, a highway. When you reach there, you take your left to that roundabout where there's so much fish. You take Masaka Road, you will drive 
all people at House of Revival drive. You will drive about 10, 10 to 15 minutes and you'll be in Chengera. Is that clear? So you're all welcome to the concert. I'll be there. Security will be provided. Shall we stand up? As we go out celebrates, celebrate, I request each one of you to wish your neighbor a wonderful Christmas holiday, a blessed one, joy, peace, and love should reign, should reign, and reign forever. Amen. Go in peace, enjoy in love, and serve with joy. God bless you all. Our service has ended. Thank you so much, everybody who served today. God bless you. Enjoy your Christmas.